Rhett and Fury got nerfed while Hunters saw a big change to their main legendary. Now with buffs to Affliction Warlock and Shadow Priest, could we finally see the return of Dot Cleaves? Today we'll tell you what hotfixes actually matter as we predict the meta for 925. But before we get into it, you're probably watching this video because you like to stay ahead of the meta. And with over 600 class guides and a thousand arena commentaries, Skillcapped has you covered. Visit the link below to learn about our rating game guarantee and start your PvP journey today. First up, we have Melee, who were probably the biggest losers overall after Tuesday's nerfs. Two of the biggest Melee on everyone's radar this season have been Rhett Paladins and Fury Warriors. Of course, we don't have to tell you how broken this combo has been because you've probably fallen victim to its one-shot potential at least once this season. The biggest change affecting both specs was a nerf to Conqueror's Banner. Even though this was a Warrior exclusive nerf, it indirectly hurts Rhett Paladins too since Necro Warrior is their primary partner. Despite this, we still think both Fury and Rhett deserve their spot on the high tiers, as a simple swap to Kyrian might be enough to dodge most of their nerfs. We are moving Fury up to S since our last update a few months ago. And despite also being nerfed on Tuesday, we still think Rhett Paladin deserves a spot on the A plus tier since it has exceeded our expectations since the beginning of the season. Now let's talk about Hunters. Of course, only one Hunter spec is considered melee, but we need to talk about the Craven change before discussing everything else. Here's the scoop. Pre-nerf Craven was arguably the most efficient defensive cooldown in the game, and despite being nerfed, it is still really good. With that in mind, the nerf will probably hit hardest in two places. Across the board, it will hurt Jungle Cleave since now it opens up the Hunter as an actual kill target for more comps. Secondly, this change will likely hurt lower rated hunters the most. Previously, you could just slam feign death and get away with it since it had such a short cooldown, but now hunters will have to put more thought into actually using it at the right times. Because of all of this, we're moving survival hunters down half a tier since our last update. And just briefly, there are two specs that we definitely undervalued back in our May update. Both Feral Druids and Unholy DKs have exceeded our expectations. Ferals might have been indirectly nerfed by hunters going down a tier, but they're in a much better place individually than we expected. This is mostly due to how broken their 4 set actually is. When combined with Feral Frenzy, Sickle of the Lion is actually able to pump out huge damage, with only a select few abilities that can counter this effect. Unholy DK is also proven to be better than we originally thought, and we're moving it up to the A plus tier since our last update. The reason it is so good is because of how powerful its burst damage is during Abomination Limb, while also having a unique form of healing reduction. This allows it to slot into multiple comps, most notably with Demo Warlocks, which we will cover in a bit. And with that, we have our melee meta prediction after the June 28th hotfixes. Outlaw rogues did see a minor nerf, but we still expect them to be amazing at high ratings, along with sub rogues due to the strength of RMP. For the most part, we expect to see many comps built around rogues and warriors, which seems to have been the case all expansion. At lower ratings, some specs like Frost DKs, Arms Warriors, and Demon Hunters might have more value since their damage can be brutal against inexperienced healers. And with melee out of the way, we have some major changes to range DPS. Shadow Priests are one of the biggest winners here, and they have massive potential for making a comeback from the B tier since our last update. Honestly, Shadow is probably one of the most difficult casters to place on a tier list since they've evolved into a true support class, but with buffs to both Vampiric Touch and Shadow Word Pain, and with nerfs to both Fury Warriors and Hunters, we could definitely see Shadow rise back to glory. Its primary strength in the meta is how good it is at gatekeeping setup heavy comps like RMP and Jungle Cleave, and for all of these reasons together, we think it deserves a spot in the A tier once again. For similar reasons, we will be moving Affliction up along with Shadow. Just like Priests, it is Warrior Melee Cleaves that give them the biggest issues, but with buffs to Dark Pact and Soul Leech, and with nerfs to Craven, Affliction might actually be poised to make a strong comeback. Demo Warlocks are also benefactors from these hotfixes too, and they have quickly dominated the meta in the middle of this season. The biggest change since our last update was increasing their pet's healing reduction to 25%, which makes it the strongest MS effect out of any caster DPS. We think they've truly solidified themselves as a high caliber caster, and might actually challenge Fire Mage as the best ranged DPS. Unfortunately, Destro is one of the biggest losers since our last update in patch 9.2. They came to dominate the early season, but have since lost some steam. There are two contributing reasons for this. The first was the removal of demon armor, which gave them boosted damage reduction against physical DPS. The second was a change to echoing resolve, which previously granted interrupt immunity, but now only provides protection against CCs. Taken together, this has just made them much weaker into cleaves. Despite some buffs in this recent hotfix, we are putting them comfortably on the B plus tier for now. 
Rounding out ranged DPS, we have Ellie Shaman, who are moving up since our last update in May. If it wasn't obvious by now, these hotfixes have a chance to tip the balance back in favor of caster DPS after multiple seasons of melee cleave dominance. We think this will be a passive buff to elemental shamans, who have good utility for both playing with and countering enemy casters, and for that, we're moving them up to the A tier. With all of our major range DPS changes accounted for, we have a complete picture of the meta for 925. You might be asking, wait, weren't mages nerfed with these hotfixes? Well, yes, but it was mostly superficial. Their blink conduit and the netherwind PvP talent saw some minor reductions, but the core of their tankiness is still relatively intact. In general, this might become a better meta for mid-tier casters with nerfs to some melee cleaves and the hunter legendary. The spec you should pay most attention to is Demo Warlock, who might be the most versatile ranged DPS in the game for the remainder of this season. Finally, we have healers, and this is where things get tricky. Let's start by establishing one thing. We really don't think Holy Priest will be going anywhere anytime soon. They have really cemented themselves as the god tier healer, and their nerfs aren't really that impactful. Chastise duration is not really that big of a deal, and mainly hurts matchups where they play with chastise stun. The Ray of Hope change is also matchup specific, given that it isn't even taken as a default PvP talent. And finally, the mana regen change might hurt, but will probably be felt the most in 2v2 where games actually go into deep dampening. The healer that might change dramatically is Mistweaver Monk, who received buffs to their healing output and a reduction to the cooldown of Life Cocoon. This isn't enough to explain why they are moving up. Once again, we predict a gradual increase in caster cleaves, and it just so happens that Mistweaver Monks are probably the best at healing caster damage, especially dots. In the case that Affliction Warlocks and Shadow Priests come to dictate the meta, Mistweaver Monks will be one of the best answers to their rot damage. And just on a final note, we are moving Resto Druids up since our update two months ago. We might have undervalued them at the start of the season, but they are proving to be a more valuable healer in 925. The biggest reason for this is just how good they are at dealing with Outlaw Rogues and BM Hunters, which are everywhere in 2v2. Resto Druid healing continues to be weak into burst, but is still insanely strong into consistent damage, which makes it really good at healing the sustained DPS of Outlaw and BM, and might make it valuable in a Dot Cleave meta. And with that in mind, this is what we predict the healer meta to look like for the remainder of the season. Holy Priests will likely remain gods, while Holy Paladins will be their budget alternative. The biggest question mark is Mistweaver Monk, who have enormous potential this season if the meta shifts over to dot damage based caster cleaves. But we want to know what you think. Do you think dot damage will make a return this patch after the melee cleave fiesta of season 1 and 2? Let us know in the comments below. And if you're wanting to stay ahead of the meta, head over to skillcap.com. There you will find over 600 class guides and a thousand arena commentaries. Together, that's an average of 24 hours of instructional videos per class. And for only $4.99 a month, that is massive value. If that wasn't enough, we offer money back guarantee if you don't gain at least 250 rating while actively using our website. And with special members only access to our Discord, you can get on-demand help from pro players. So what are you waiting for? Join a community of over half a million lifetime users at skillcap.com. Discount link below. All right, everyone, that wraps it up. The meta might be making some big movements, and we will be here to let you know how it evolves. As always, thanks for watching. See you soon.